Hello friends, welcome to Superfast Study and Experiment. So friends, in this video we will learn, understand, I will also tell you practically how measurements are taken with a vernier caliper. From which positions, that is, what measurements are taken from where? ID, OD, right? How depth is taken, I am going to tell you every single thing practically. So after watching this video, you will also learn to use a vernier caliper very well and that too in a very easy way. So let's start the video. Stay tuned to the video till the end. Before taking a reading with a vernier caliper, you should know some basic things about which I will tell you first. First of all, the least count of a vernier caliper is 0.02 mm. You have to remember this because you are going to need it in the future while measuring. Look, I will tell you in short. Least count is the smallest measurement that can be taken from any measuring instrument, that is called its least count. So the least count of a vernier caliper is 0.02 mm. Now let us know about its parts. See, this is the internal jaw on the top. Internal measurement is taken from this. I am going to show you everything practically later. Let me tell you the basics first. This is the external jaw below, with this the measurement of the external surface of an object is taken. External outer measurement. Okay, here is this locking screw. I will tell you later what is its function. It is locked with this. This scale is a metric scale. Okay, and here you can see that there is a blade for depth measurement at the end. This is the depth measurement blade. With the help of this, the depth in any object is measured. If there is a thin depth, even there we have to measure the depth, then we can measure with this. I am going to tell you practically how to do it later. This scale is a vernier scale. Okay? There are five divisions in the vernier scale. Here there are divisions from 1 to 10. But in every division there are five small lines. So that means the total here is 50. Now we start taking practical measurements. So look, here this is our main scale of vernier. The reading in the main scale is given in M. Isn't it? So this reading is in M. You can see as it is in our normal scale in amazing tape. And this is our vernier scale. You can see here you have 01234 till 10. There are 5 small lines from 0 to 1. So here there are divisions till 10. That means there are a total of 50 small lines here. There are 50 lines in our vernier scale. So here is an object placed in front of you and I have a vernier caliber. So look here I can slide it like this and look here this is my object so I have to measure its OD. So to measure the OD, first of all I have cleaned the object properly. I have cleaned it so that dust particles do not come. Now I have pressed it and this is the locking nut. It is locked so that when you take out the object, it is possible that if it is not locked then it will spread a little. So the reading will be wrong. So we have taken it out. After locking it, now we will take the reading here. So you can see that from here it is coming to a little less than 60. Look carefully at the zero line here. It is coming to a little less than 60. Isn't it? By looking at the main scale we have understood that our object is more than 59 millimeters but less than 60. So first of all we will write 59. Now what do we have to do? We have to take the reading from the vernier scale. We have to see which line of the vernier scale is exactly in a straight line with the line of the main scale. We have to pay attention to that. So here we see carefully which line is in a straight line. So here we can see that the line after 6 is exactly in a straight line. The line of the main scale and the line of the vernier scale, right? They are exactly in a straight line. So now see, there are 5 lines from 0 to 1. So from 0 to 1 there will be 5. What will be from 0 to 2? It will be 10. Similarly, what will be from 0 to 6? It will be 30. And one line ahead of 30 will be 31. Now we will write 31 here. 59 plus 31. Now we have to multiply 31 by the least count of the vernier which is 0.02 millimeters. So when we solve this, we will get the answer 59.62 millimeters. Similarly, I will tell you the readings further, which will make it even more clear. I will also tell you after doing the further measurement. Now we measure the ID of this object i.e. internal diameter with the vernier. 
So, for that we will use the upper part of this part which I told you about earlier. This is the internal jaw, so, we will do the measurement with the internal jaw. We will insert it in this way. After inserting it properly, we will spread it properly and after spreading it, we will lock it so that our reading is correct. There should not be any error at all. We have locked it. Now we will take out that object and see the reading again. Now here we can see that our zero line in the main scale is ahead of 20 and behind 21 i.e. it is between 20 and 21. So first of all we will write 20. After that we will see the further reading with the vernier scale. 20 plus, look here which line is coinciding. So if we look carefully here, the line with number 8 written on the vernier scale is coinciding completely. Isn't it? So look, there are 5 lines from 0 to 1, there are 10 lines from 0 to 2. So how many lines will there be from 0 to 8? 8 times 5 equals 40. There will be 40 lines. So 40 asterisk by 0 0.02 which is the least count of the vernier. This comes to 80 millimeters. So we had written 20 earlier. 20 plus 80, so this becomes 20.80 millimeters. Now I will tell you how to measure the depth. Look here we will measure its depth. So as we spread it out, this is the external jaw and the internal jaw, then this blade comes out from behind. You look carefully. This blade is in my left hand. Isn't it? So what do we have to do? 